Hey guys, it's Amy, and I've talked about boilerplate spacecraft before, but a boilerplate is really only useful when it's mated to a launch vehicle. So today, we're talking about the Little Joe rockets and the Mercury program on Vintage Space. The concept of the Little Joe rocket began as a way to use existing rockets to test early versions of spacecraft. The idea was the brainchild of Max Faget and Paul Purser, two engineers working at NASA's Langley Research Center in Virginia. They came up with the idea of clustering four Sargent rockets together to simulate what a Redstone rocket would do in flight. These Sargent rockets are much smaller than the Redstone, but four clustered together could deliver a significant amount of thrust. It was basically a way to get data using mock spacecraft, or boilerplate models. Over the course of its development, from an idea to an actual rocket that could be let for contracts, Little Joe got its name. An early cross-section drawing showed four holes, and it looked like the crap's game throw of Double Deuce, which is two twos on the dice. So even though additional rocket motors were ultimately added to the Little Joe, the name Little Joe stuck. The main rationale behind using the Little Joe vehicles was to test the re-entry aerodynamics of the capsule and also for launch escape system tests. The launch escape system was designed to fire rockets to pull the spacecraft free of a rocket in flight if anything went wrong with the rocket during launch. The problem was, NASA wasn't sure what would happen if the launch escape system had to fire as the spacecraft was reaching max Q, or maximum dynamic pressure. This is the point in flight where the relative speed of the spacecraft and the pressure of the atmosphere combine to put the most resistance on the spacecraft. As NASA developed the idea of the Little Joe, the rocket took shape. This made it perfect for testing vital elements of the Mercury spacecraft in flight. And because the Little Joes could launch from existing facilities at Wallops, it was a double bonus. It was a cheaper test vehicle that didn't need new launch facilities. The initial flights were designed to test for in-flight and impact forces on the spacecraft, and the goals were later expanded to include measuring critical parameters at increasing altitudes. Additional goals included gathering information about noise levels, heat and pressure loads, and also heat shield separation. And another goal was testing animal reactions to spaceflight. The Little Joes would be some of the first rockets to take passengers on board. Not humans, but chimps. North American won the contract to build the Little Joe rockets in late 1958, and as 1959 wore on, the design was honed and perfected. In all, North American produced seven Little Joe rockets, and NASA made use of them on early Mercury test flights. The first Little Joe launched on August 21st of 1959, and it wasn't great. The launch abort system fired, but the booster did not. So it was only a flight of the launch escape system, not the actual launch escape system working in flight. Nevertheless, NASA pressed forward. Another Little Joe flight on November 4th of 1959 was designed to gather data on the launch escape system firing at max Q. But even though the launch looked really good to observers, it turned out that the launch escape system fired 10 seconds after max Q, so it wasn't really a success for the primary objective. Another Little Joe launch on December 20th of 1959 saw Sam the rhesus monkey fly into space, or at least suborbital space. The Little Joe sent the spacecraft to 100,000 feet, at which point the tower and capsule separated exactly as planned, and the spacecraft reached a peak of 280,000 feet on its ballistic arc. That's about 53 miles. But errors in accounting for wind meant that it was about 100,000 feet lower than planned, and Sam only got four minutes instead of the planned five minutes of weightlessness. His re-entry was mild and the impact a little bit hard, but he did survive, which boded very well for the humans vying to be the first to launch on a Mercury mission. A follow-up Little Joe flight with a female rhesus monkey on board had the tower separate at exactly max Q, making it a successful flight. On November 8th of 1960, Little Joe 5 launched with the first real flight article Mercury spacecraft on board. Not a boilerplate and not a spacecraft modified for a rhesus monkey passenger. And it was also not a greatly stunning success. 
The rocket launched and the launch escape system fired, but it fired way too early, which meant the booster effectively followed the spacecraft on its arcing trajectory, so it wasn't going away from the rocket, it was just kind of moving along with the rocket on a ballistic arc. The two vehicles traveled together until they impacted the ground and exploded. In the end, there were eight Little Joe missions launched in support of the Mercury program, and it helped NASA gather the vital data it needed to actually put a human on top of a redstone and then an Atlas rocket to send him into an arcing trajectory, and in the case of the Atlas, into orbit around the Earth. I'm not going to list all the stats of the Little Joe missions in a video because nobody likes a listicle of a video, but all that information is in the description below if you'd like more information like the dates and the mission objectives and whether or not it was a success. The Little Joe series had been such a stunning success for NASA with Mercury that the agency wanted to continue using the same type of vehicle with Apollo. Of course, the Little Joe was too small to take the weight and the size of the Apollo spacecraft, which was so much bigger than Mercury. And so NASA came up with the Little Joe too. But that is a story for a different video. Let me know if you still have questions about Little Joe rockets or if there's more about these early test flights that you would like to have me dig into in future episodes. And of course, leave me your questions and comments and all kinds of things about old-timey spaceflight in the comment section below as well. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram for daily-ish, vintage space-ish content. And with new episodes going up right here every single week, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode.